I think I kind of love it. <laughs> Back in the spring of 2020, I found a local Boy Scout high adventure base that was selling a handful of these 2017 Harrow Flightline mountain bikes. Because I have three boys and they all need bikes, I bought two. After surviving three seasons of a local Boy Scout camp, these bikes were beat up. You can see there are scratches all over them. The fork wasn't working. We've had to spend the last several months and years just updating and maintaining these bikes to keep them running. Today, we're going to attempt to paint this bike frame and update the fork to bring the whole thing into 2021. Twenty minutes later, we got this thing all torn apart. It's got some pretty good dings and scratches all over here. And so what we're gonna try to do is get this all sanded out, smoothed out, washed up, and see if we can't prime this and get it ready for paint. <laughs> this is gonna be a total experiment. I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, every time we do any job in this house, it is a hack job. I'm doing the best I can with what I know how. I don't know how, <laughs> but knowing how and learning how is all part of the game and it's so much fun. Sometimes it's a real pain in the butt. I've got almost everything sanded. I spent a long time, specifically right here on the sides where the logos were, really trying to make sure that uh, the stickers and everything that were on there were all gone. I gotta tell you, the unsung hero of this project is this Dremel multi-tool, the one that's got like the triangular corner. I used all the sanding pads that came on this. I think I went from like a, at one point I was at like a 80 grit sandpaper, which was really too rough. So I went to like a 120 and a 220, 240, something like that. Uh, and just went as deep in here as I could. I wasn't trying to take it all the way down to metal because I don't think that's the way to go. But like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. All I have left to do is tape up all of the contact points on the dropouts here. I need to tape up the bottom bracket and tape up the head tube. And once we get all the tape done, we'll be ready for paint. And I think I got a solution you're gonna like. Welcome to the paint booth. This is the frugal paint booth. We have hung our bike frame off of the basketball hoop. We're outside, so it's well ventilated. This is nice, I can actually kind of spin it as I need to. I can get underneath, I can get on top, and there's nothing else for me to really worry about. If I get black paint on the black pole, I don't really care. The only thing I care about is, Andrew, you gotta make sure I don't paint the camera. I've done a lot of experiments over the last couple days trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. My original thought was to copy uh, Martin from Ito Designs on YouTube, and I wasn't doing very well. He had this really nice way of printing a pattern onto the bike using some saran wrap or some kind of plastic foil wrap. Um, that wasn't working for me. I was changing different colors. I think I finally landed on, I'm gonna use a plastic bag, like a grocery sack, and silver. Um, I like the silver paint because it really looks metallic against the flat black, which I think looks really, really cool. So we're going to give this a shot and I might completely fail, but at this point, um, we're all in. So I'm going to spray. I tried actually a couple different methods. I tried spraying on another piece of plastic and then dipping that and then going this way because I didn't want to have too much paint. Um, that wasn't really, really working. It was getting too light for me and I really wanted this to be a little bit more almost like splotchy, if you will. So, but I want it to be like a random pattern. So we're gonna try to just spray it right here and then we'll put it right on the bike. Sound good? 
Okay, here's the first one ready. Like that? Just like that. And you're gonna do that all over the bike? Yeah. I feel like that would look really cool like on the trail. You like it? Yeah. All right, let's do the whole thing then. The only thing I'm seeing is I'm, it's slipping a little bit as I blotch and I don't want it to slide. Slide. The nice thing is it's since it's kind of random, if I mess up, I just kind of go over it again. Mm -hmm. It's actually, I think I kind of love it. <laughs> So today we're going to go with the dead flat durable clear coat from Rust-Oleum. This has an interesting spray pattern that I'm not quite used to, so I'm going to kind of try to use some of the bottom parts first. But I think the key with this is to just go on once, let it dry for about 15 minutes and do like a second and third coat. Um, but because it's dead flat, I'm not going to try to like sand in between polishes or anything like that. Yep. I'm pretty sure I got the front of the front. Okay, so let's wait five minutes and we'll do coat number two. Let's recap. We did three coats with this Rust-Oleum Flat Black. Okay, this is the 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. We did one coat with the metallic silver and it was just the splotching on. And then we did three coats with the Rust-Oleum Universal Clear Durable Top Coat Dead Flat. Here is the finished product. I love how the sun catches the metallic. It just turned out so cool. Let me try to get you some different angles so you can see what it looks like. 